Alright, welcome to our 15th episode of our second season. I'm your host, Alvin Morris. Today, well, we're doing an update from yesterday's podcast on uh, the sheriffs uh, from each county of Washington State that were taking opposition against I-1639, Initiative 1639. Um, we still haven't heard back from a lot of sheriffs in this in the state when it comes to each individual county, when it comes to where their stance is. However, we have seen uh 15 16 different shares stand up against it publicly in opposition of initiative 1639 and from what i've seen i've seen two i believe uh shares uh stand for initiative 1639 i believe that was the sheriff of king county and the sheriff of thurston county but i can't be too sure i don't have all the information in front of me right now however uh it doesn't seem to be too much of an update when it comes to my own county uh standing publicly whether for or against initiative 1639 however i do have an article pulled up that i will share on the live broadcast for both the youtube and the facebook uh that states here uh published february 1st 2019 washington sheriff takes stand against gun control refuses to enforce bad law so that's where it kind of just goes and highlights some of the more uh uh publicly spoken out sheriffs like uh uh kinzovich or however i've been pronouncing his name wrong but he seems to have been uh, been the most prominent when it comes to standing out in opposition for uh, voicing his opinion why not just Initiative 1639 is so bad, but how it doesn't really do anything for his department whatsoever. So, moving on, I will leave that link uh, in the drop down boxes here. Let me get added, and we are moving on. Now then, <laughs> we have an article published ten hours ago. Uh, I want to do this segment, call this segment, uh, political correctness segment. Uh, Mary Poppins branded racist by U.S. academic in blackface row over scene where she gets covered in suit. So if you don't know what suit is, suit comes from a fireplace. It's usually uh, ashes. And uh, if you're familiar with Mary Poppins from, I believe, what, 1966? I'm not sure what year. I don't have it in front of me. Um, she... there's. It, it, they're, they're trying to claim it as racist here. Um, like, not too long ago, this past Christmas holiday, when they are claiming the Baby It's Cold Outside song as mis- misogynist and sexist. So, uh, it looks like it's just going to be a video clip here, so I'll get it playing here. Uh, don't know what's going on here, and hopefully it plays. There we go. Oh, there's a camera. So, anyways, moving on. Uh, this is the political correctness segment I want to talk about because everyone's panties are so much into their twat that it doesn't seem to be a focus on, uh, you know, first world problems. Here we go. Light up the sky. It's the entertainment thrill of a lifetime. Mary Poppins. This is, uh... The trailer advertising of it. Mary Poppins, Walt Disney's newest and most delightfully entertaining motion picture. Starring the toast of Broadway's musical stage, the incomparable Julie Andrews. For a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. The medicine go down, the medicine go down. Just a spoonful of sugar helps the me- So if you don't know what Mary Poppins is, then obviously you have a familiarity with it now. Um, but this is, it's just one of those things, again, like, we had the last season holiday, um, with the Baby It's Cold Outside song leading to, uh, you know, n- unconsensual sex, basically, and him forcing her to stay in his apartment during that song. However, it's been performed for over 50 years, and no one has gotten offended until now. And then this one now, we have, this movie's been, fuck, when I was sick on school days growing up as a kid in elementary, you know, my grandmother would have me watch this movie, so... I've seen it quite a few more times than I probably should have growing up, and like, I was never offended by a blackface row over scene where she gets covered in suit. And, you know, to get covered in suit... Sorry about that. To get covered in suit on, uh... in a fireplace and have it assume it be racist, it's just ridiculous. So that's our, that's our touch on political correctness today, and it's just getting more and more ridiculous. And again, I said earlier, first world problems. Well, that's because we live in a country where you can have the ability to be able to live such a comfortable lifestyle that you can get upset over things like this. I mean, if you are if you didn't know when your next meal was going to be there or you got to fight for survival every day, this probably wouldn't be on your mind. 
So I'll leave that link in the description as well so you guys can check that out. It's a little ridiculous here. Um, we're going to take a quick commercial break. And we are going to come back on the second segment. We're going to be talking about um, this Pacific Northwest Puget Sound significant storm we're having. If you listen to yesterday's podcast, you know that I lost my keys in the snow the night before, having a lot of fun outside. So uh, later this week, it looks like we could have a significant, even larger storm coming our way with this polar vortex breaking off into three different places. So that's looking to be interesting. And then we are going to come back with an article... Uh, about suppressors um, we get back because uh, Senator Lee pushes for a new ball new bill to drop off federal regula- regulations on gun suppressors so we'll get back to the second segment we'll be talking about that so stay tuned we'll be right back Bees Combat Systems at BeesCombatSystems.com protecting those who prepare 801-987-0893 9-3 for custom body armor carriers and tactical gear for military, law enforcement, contractors, corporate security, responsible citizens, and border patrol. Beast Combat Systems at BeastCombatSystems.com. 801-987-0893. All right, we're back to our second segment of Tac Talk. I am your host, Alden Morris. This is our 15th episode, and it's our second season. And uh, we're hoping to have guests on the show here soon, but <laughs> it's going to happen here soon. But it's looking like since I've been on the roll and keeping this more consistent, my guests have been kind of spread out, especially with the topics I want to discuss. They're more, uh, they're much more, especially with the gun owners who are going through these, uh, the gun sales, the 18 to 21 year olds, the gun shop owners. Who are, uh, re- who are refusing to obey Initiative 1639, getting that national media attention. Those guys have been hard to get on the show just because I, you know, I get in contact with them. I'm like, I'm from Talk Talk. They're like, that's great. What's that? <laughs> so it's still working on that reputation. Got to build that consistency. Moving on. Uh, if you listen to yesterday's show, again, I mentioned that I lost my keys in the snowstorm. And for us to get snow here, it's uh kind of a rare thing it's not too bad i mean if you want to really if you really want to see snow you can drive to it and everything in washington is drivable if you want to see the desert you can drive to it in yakima you want to see the snow you can drive to it mount rainier or mount uh st helens uh you want to see the woods basically our backyard so everything's within driving reach but here in the pierce county puget sound area uh we get snow every couple of years usually it's like a light dusting sometimes it's six inches to eight inches um every four or five years something like that and it lasts like maybe the day the 24-hour period um because it's that real powdery snow plus it turns into slush real fast because we're a very rainy area so if we do get slow snow that's like a decent amount of snow to cancel school for that day or cancel most people's jobs um it's usually gone to slush within it's that black nasty side street slush Within about 24 hours. However, this past one has been a real good snow dusting that we got. It seemed to harden and turn into ice the next night and fresh powder on top of that. On top of that, we now have a potentially significant storm headed toward Puget Sound this Friday. So what's funny is this this snow is supposed to be a light dusting until Tuesday, which is today. And uh, I'm, a, I'm a survivalist. If you, if you know me personally, I like to over-exaggerate uh, natural weather or weather disasters and say, like, if it's going to snow, it's got to snow like it's the end of the world. Well, it looks like my dream came true, <laughs> so it's going to be fun. I'm excited for that. Uh, this Friday, i got to find my keys in that front yard, so still got to get a hold. Yesterday, I had some one of you guys reached out to me and came out with a really great idea, and that was to get a metal detector, and just so happens to be a family member nearby has a metal detector, so we're going to make that happen. So, uh, weather system expected to move in by Friday could bring more lowland snow to the Puget Sound area this weekend. The current forecast shows the system moving from south from Canada. This is that polar vortex that's breaking apart. Snow could be fill, begin falling Friday night into Saturday. A low will drop the coast, pulling cold air out of the interior of British Columbia. That has the potential to create a rain-snow mix that could turn the snow showers as temperatures cool. King 5 meteorologist George Steele says it could be a major event. I know this is too soon to swallow, but more snow is heading for Western Washington later this week. So that one's... Uh, it's exciting. So I'll leave the link for that if you're in the same area, uh, especially if you live in Washington. This does affect you as well. So I'll leave that link uh, in the YouTube and the Facebook podcast. And finally, but not least, or the last one, um, you know what I'm saying. 
Senator Lee pushes new bill to drop all federal regulations on gun silencers, suppressors. And I hate that word term, silencer, because that's from the movies. But re re realistically, all suppressors suppress the sound, the back, the back ass of, of, you know, the back pressure. Uh, ah, let me get my mind together. Give me a second. <laughs> Drink this coffee. All right, those in favor of the bill say it's a good time. It's about time, but those against it say it opens all kinds of public safety issues. Vice President of the Utah State Rifle and Pistol Association, Jim Foster, says he prefers to shoot with a silent suppressor on his gun. Part of the reason I don't like the term silencer is it gives you the impression if you put one of these things on your firearm, it's going to be totally silent. Silent. That's not the case, he said. Foster had to go through a lengthy and expensive process to own the suppressor. He said it cost $200 and took six months. On top of the background check, he already completed to purchase a gun. That's that's actually impressive, $200 and six months. That's not counting for the cost of the suppressor. I, it, I'll tell you right now, a suppressor does not cost $200. The tax stamp costs $200. And in my neck of the woods here up in Washington State, it takes anywhere between nine months to a year to complete that background, the federal background check for processing a suppressor license. And then you have to pay that $200 tax stamp to, in order to process it. Once you get approved, then you can go buy a suppressor, which costs anywhere between $800 and $1,500. So, depending on what kind of, if you want to go for a rifle suppressor or a pistol suppressor. And it acts as a second tax stamp. So, if you're carrying that suppressor anywhere you go, you got to have your license with it or your paperwork with your background check. So, it's just ridiculous. I can't see why I would need any more of a background check to hold this device versus the pistol it is attached to, he said. Suppressors can make shooting safer for the millions of hunters and sportsmen that exercise their constitutional right to use firearms every year. Senator Lee said, The current process for obtaining a suppressor is far too expensive and burdensome. Our bill would remove these unnecessary federal regulations and make it easier for firearm users to protect themselves. I think it's totally unnecessary, and I think it's potentially very dangerous, Ron Molin, founder of the Gun Violence Prevention Center, said. Molin said gun suppressors make it more difficult for police to track where a gunshot is coming from. <laughs> my mom, my son, I'm sorry, was shot and killed at Indiana University in 1992, he said. His son was a 23-year-old graduate student when he was killed trying to save another student from gunfire. It's why Molin was dedicated his life to, advent to advocate for gun law reform. I don't think any parents should have to go through this, he said. Molin said Senator, Lee's Senator Lee's bill is the opposite of what he's been fighting for. This is what I'd call another permissive bill, and that's, that's all we've had on gun laws for years. So, moving on. Sorry, Mullen. We apologize that your son was killed in, a, in an incident with an active uh, shooter situation. However, the answer is not to take away more guns because criminals still break the laws and still do those kind of, kinds of heinous crimes. The answer would be to allow, your, allow you the ability to protect yourself without regulation or trading your right as a privilege. So, for example, the Constitution says that nothing can infringe on your right to arm and bear yourself. The suppressor includes that. Uh, and if you know anything about firearms... Uh, you know, the bad guys don't exactly give you time to put on ear protection. So, like, if you want to scare everyone in the neighborhood in the middle of the night when someone breaks in your house, or if you want to put fear in people in an active shooter shoot, shoot situation when it comes to just the sound, the repercussions of that sound, especially with a larger caliber that you carry, um, that's why you need a suppressor. I mean, it's just much more professional. So, plus... You know, not it, it suppresses. It doesn't silence. You still hear it. You can still you can you hear a trajectory where sound comes from if you're looking to hunt down someone shooting a suppressor. So it's ridiculous that the assumptions that are made for people who don't even own a firearm they act as if like, well, this is what I heard. This is a fact. No, you've never been to a gun range. You don't know how it works. You don't even own a firearm. You don't know how it works. So don't make comments on something that you don't know how it works. So. That's the end of our segment. We're going to move on. We'll be back on tomorrow, and uh, we have one topic to <laughs> Thanks for listening. Talk to you guys later.